Hi, live. Hi, hey, everyone. Hey. <laughs> hey there. How are you? How are you? I'm very well. Very That's well. Great. Cool, cool. Yeah, very um, cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks yeah, since Compared to Queensland. What yeah. is this? <laughs> yeah. Our spring is not spring at the moment. It's not spring. It's sprung somewhere else. Yeah. So, as usual, welcome to the Fireside Chat with Matthew Greenwood. And I'm here just to do a little bit of housekeeping and then I'm going to leave you with it. Um, so just first things, remember, first things first, remember please to let everybody that you know and love let uh, know that this is happening tonight because Matthew's got a very interesting um, fireside chat and it's a continuation of one that uh, he started earlier uh, but it's probably about six weeks ago I think, I think it is yeah yeah so life got in the way but uh, now we're sort of continuing that and Matthew will tell you a bit more about that in a moment we are also um, posted when we're doing what's called cross-posting on to the mytimetv.live page as well as Matthew Greenwood Spiritual Journeys page. So we're live on both of those pages and we are we are on other pages but we're not live there. So if you make a comment from any of those, either of those pages, you will be, uh, you, you will be, able, we will be able to see it or Matthew will be able to see it in the dashboard of the um, the software that we use. So please ask your questions. If you're not on either of those pages, please come over to either Matthew Greenwood Spiritual Journeys or MyTimeTV.live so we can see that you're watching us and it'd be great to have you join us live and ask you questions because Matthew loves questions, don't you, Matthew? I do. It's, it's what right. makes the evening. Yes. And also, if you are on Matthew Greenwood Spiritual Journeys page and you make a comment uh, below asking a question or even saying hi, you'll get a message in your messenger inbox and it will just say you have received this comment because you've made, uh, you've received this message because you've made a comment on a post on Matthew's page. Now that will, if you want to enter for a spirit guide reading and each week Matthew does a, uh, picks a winner at random for a spirit guide reading and uh, we announce that or he announces that the following week. But if you would like to register, you can do so and by just following the bouncy ball inside of the messenger, we just uh, will ask you a cup for a couple of details and then you'll be registered to go in the drawer to win a spirit guide reading. I think that's it from me. And okay. now over to you, Matthew. Thanks, Adair. No worries. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, so the winner from last week is Kathy Paris Wendell. And um, so we'll be getting in touch with Kathy, and uh, then it's up to her to get in touch with me. Um, now, just a few hellos while I see them. Kerry, uh, we've got Daniel, Kylie, and Fiona. Hey, guys. And Petro. Hey, Petro. Um, over in WA. Very good. So, um, as usual, who else we got? Ah, just uh, things coming up. There we go. Um, so, as usual, we're going to do the meditation, a grounding exercise um, very soon. Um, what um, I'm going to be talking about tonight is it's kind of blown out to what I thought it was, only because as I think about things, there's a whole lot more to it. it just It's like a rabbit warren sometimes. The information... Um, I can't just give surface information. I like to get a bit more depth to to what I'm talking about. So we're going to be talking about medicine items or medicine tools. Um, but then I thought, well, we can't just talk about medicine tools and in the use of them, but we've got to talk about how we create them too because it's um, important to know how to create your own medicine tools so that... Um, you really take on that medicine for yourself instead of um, there's nothing wrong with purchasing something from someone else. I mean, I, I carry a lot of medicine tools here with me um, that I sell to um, clients and to uh, other customers. Um, 
but I also teach how to make things as well, uh, which is very important. So, um, so I'll be getting into that as well. So uh, just a little bit of advertising for what's coming up. So I'm doing a meditation on a Monday night fortnightly. Uh, the next meditation that's coming up is not this Monday, but the following Monday. But this Monday, um, got something special coming up. It's a channeling evening. Um, this will be a closed group. Um, so we'll be uh, getting that information out very soon. Um, I know it's a little bit uh, short notice, but um, I'm sure if you've got the time, uh, you'll drop in. So what, who I'll be channeling is galactic beings. Now, I've done this in front of groups before offline. Uh, I've never done it online, so it'll be an interesting evening for all of us. Um, but I've had a chat with them, and they're, they're definitely supportive of the whole process. So um, we'll, um, we'll see how it goes. Now, I've also got a uh, level three shamanism, which is about doing shamanic body work coming up too. So if you want to, um, if you want information, more detailed information about that, then you can give me a call on 0410-658-797. I'm a bit of an old-fashioned guy, and you're going to have to get used to this if you're going to be wanting to contact me. Um, I'd rather do talk, verbal, <laughs> than messaging. Um, it's the best way to get me because, uh, to be honest, I have a bit of trouble with time and not having enough time to message really clear information. It's much quicker to actually say it. So um, um, I'll just throw that one in there. And um, that's what I mean. I'm a bit of an old-fashioned guy. Just call me a dinosaur. Many people would, <laughs> particularly on technology. But uh, hey, here I am. I'm doing it. So all right. So let's do this grounding exercise first. And um, this is, again, this is just a grounding exercise that's specifically designed to help to stabilize your energy in these times we're in, um, to keep particularly for empaths and anyone that has a sensitive energy about them, uh, this grounding exercise is here and purposely for uh, keeping your energy stable and, and grounded. And um, I guess you could say even protected from other people's um, projection of energy. So. Um, um let's get into it now so if you can get into a, a nice comfortable position seated not laying down um, laying down has let's say a negative effect if you want to actually meditate if you actually want to do something consciously as soon as you lay down the the brain um, physiologically you go into sleep mode or you begin to go into sleep mode and as soon as you become more grounded and uh, calmer, guess what happens? You actually go to sleep. I've had people snoring on me in face-to-face uh, -face meditations when they're laying down. So um, as far as I'm concerned, that's a bit of a no-no if you actually want to remember, consciously remember what you're doing in that meditation. Here we go. Nice deep breaths. Remembering that the deep breaths that you're taking in consciously are about taking in life force, which is something we can't do without. If we're going to take in healthy life force, then we need to be taking it in from energy all around us rather than taking it from other people because they're the only two choices. You either take it from the energy within the universe or within that space around you, that sea of consciousness that you're in, um, or from the earth, or you have to take it from other people. So I guess it's your choice, but uh, doing it in a healthy, clean way will be so much more productive for you. So with that deep breath in that you take, Use the breath out to actually move that life force as well. So with the next deep breath in, consciously taking that life force in, with the breath out, 
push that life force down through your body, your base chakra, your legs, your feet, and down into the earth. And just keep that same cycle of breathing going. So repetition with intention drives energy really clearly and strongly. That's good. Just keep that cycle of breathing going for a few more breaths, making sure that you're getting a connection to the earth. <clears throat> Generally, what most people feel is a tingling or a, a warmth down through their legs, down through their feet, when that energy is flowing. Excellent. Next step, we're going to go deeper within the chakra system. And this is not the chakra system within the body. It's the exterior chakra system that is right down. With, there are a number of chakras down below our feet. We're going down to the deepest one next. And this is at the core of the earth. So with a nice deep breath in again, pulling that life force in, and then with the breath out, pushing that life force, driving it right down to the core of the earth, to your earth chakra, which is the deepest one in the earth. Just keep that same cycle of breathing going. Now with this one, so generally feedback from people is when they do connect with this earth chakra, they feel an overall well-being or warmth or calmness. And sometimes they're feeling energy like a tingling around them rather than in their physical. It's more exterior to the physical, which is still a recognition of nice clean energy in your space. Fantastic. So by now, most people should feel some connection to that earth chakra. So just to give you, while you're holding that space, just to give you a little bit of feedback on that earth chakra, if some of you haven't heard about this or know that it actually exists, um, what it is, it's the deepest connection with the earth that we can get on a chakra level. It also represents a connection that anyone that is spiritually heart connected, they're also automatically connecting with that earth chakra. So when you think about groups, cultures, native cultures, the Druid groups, um, um, I even have met and worked with, um, someone from the Viking culture that still exists. So those teachings are still there, They're still working. From the Tibetan monks, the Hindu culture, all of the different native cultures, this deep connection with the earth is wide open for them. And as we access this earth chakra more, we automatically link in with all of these spiritual groups or spiritual cultures, which then in turn uh, connects us on a consciousness level. And when this compounds, that consciousness level of all of these spiritual people then rise above standard or normal human consciousness and it helps to pull human consciousness up beautiful okay so from that space i'd like you to just relax your breath 
and we're going to go into a much higher vibrational level of energy now. So this next level is what they call technically our core star energy. But what it is, is the God force, uh, the energy of God or great spirit, the creator, that is not outside of us, but within us. So imagine, as you connect with this space, imagine going deep within the center of your being, not just your physical, but your being, knowing that your energy system is of a multi-dimensional level and extends way beyond physical matter. And it just keeps going deeper and deeper inside. So as you do follow that space deeper and deeper, you will connect with a light or a high vibrational energy source. And when you do, what I'd like you to do is to expand that light out with an intention of filling up your energetic space from within your physical body. So imagine that light as it's expanding out, touching every cell in your body. And as you feel your internal, physical, and the energy system within, now begin to expand it out beyond your physical into an area approximately three to four meters out in all directions. So this relates to the human aspect of your energy system, which is the first seven major energy bodies. So three to four meters sounds like a long way, but our, our energy system is far more expanded than it was 30 years ago when I first started. So now from that space of three to four meters out in all directions, what I want you to do is build that energy up really fire it up with that light. Keep filling that three to four meter space around you with light until it feels like it's you're squeezing that life force, that, uh, that core star energy into that space to the point where it just wants to explode, but not yet. Keep compacting that light into that space. That's great. It's happening fairly quick. So on the count of three, what I'd like you to do is to let that energy explode out in all directions. One, two, three, let it go. No boundaries, no limitations. Expanding out limitlessly. Beautiful. Just sit there for just for a, a few more seconds, just holding that space. As we reconnect with our physical body, bring our awareness back to our physical, I don't want you to pull that light in. Keep that light expanded out. You're not going to wear it out. It's limitless. It will actually keep your energy protected because it's of the highest vibrational frequency. So now bringing your awareness back to your physical body where you're sitting. Now just going in reverse to how we started. So breathing again, that life force in, and now grounding your energy down through your base chakra again. So breathing that life force in, then with the breath out, pushing it down through your body, your base chakra, your legs, your feet, 
and down into the earth. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And just for a few seconds, just feel what's going on in your space. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to say a few more hellos. So, Renee Graham, how are you going? Uh, we've got Alison Barford. These are some new names here. Um, Fiona's there. Kylie. Hey, Kylie. Anne Barkley. Doogie. Janine. Thomas. Hi. And we've got... Anyone else? Janet. Hey, Janet. Janet Denning. Very good. Okay, so here we are. So I've got a few goodies to show you, but let's let's talk about um, medicine tools just to start with. So the, the tools that I'll be showing you are more connected, I suppose, to the Native American culture, only because I have had a fair bit of a bit of time over there in uh, in South Dakota um, over the years, and. Um, I've had quite a lot of contact and I've lived with the guys over there on several occasions. Um, so it's something that's very familiar with me, but a lot of these items don't, aren't just um, based in the Native American culture. Um, a lot of cultures use things like rattles and uh, smudging fans and uh, medicine bags and herbs and drums. Um, and so, there, there are things that are, you know, aren't just connected to the Native American culture. So, um, and all of these medicine tools um, are very powerful when made by yourself, but also they're very powerful when you're using them ongoing because they take on your energy and your intention with what you're doing. And uh, so when you're using these tools, it's really important to be grounded and to be, to have gratitude for, for what you've created or what you've purchased or what you've been given. Because a lot of medicine tools are given to people as gifts. And uh, particularly if you've got some great friends who understand who you are and what you're into. And, uh, and I've certainly had quite a few customers that have come to me to buy something for their friend and it could be anything from a, an abalone shell which is what's used for burning sage uh, even sage i sell sage uh, drums rattles uh, anything like that i've um, made for people who are giving them as gifts so it's it's uh, it's a very powerful thing to give because you're helping someone on their spiritual path so look let's let's start with um what do we start with let's start with um drums and rattles so i run drum making workshops and uh, um, rattle making workshops um, but i also make them and sell them to people um, let's just get a couple up here so it's not you don't have to make just one shape here's around just a fairly round one now this what this is made of is just a stick i will have found in the forest um, i like using just natural sticks i don't like going out and buying dowels from hardwares and just cutting them all to the same length i think it's important to um, to give real pieces you know pieces that are totally unique each one is an individual piece now, what that leather is, or the hide is, is deer hide. And um, this is created uh, by using, working the deer hide wet. And um, so these are off cuts of the, the uh, deer hides that I use for drum making. And, um, and so they're, they're great things to make. And it's only the shapes and sizes are only limited to um, what you can create. So there's another one, there's a horse. And I'm about to, not quite yet, but uh, I've got a week off next week. And what I'm gonna be doing is uh, finally, I'm going to finish this little horse rattle off. And I've got some horse hair I'm actually going to uh, stitch in 
and like a mane and a little tuft of hair just to the front. Um, so we're going to see how that looks. Here's a buffalo. And these also look fantastic when they're painted. They're very, very unique when you paint them. So uh, you can just use acrylics to paint these. Uh, just good quality acrylic paints from uh, an artist supply. And um, you can fill them with all kinds of things um, depending on um, how you want the sound to be. So they're rattles. Now, why would you use a rattle? I hear someone ask out there. Um, so a rattle is great. If you hear that, it's a bit hard to hear through the medium that we're using. But um, if you can get some, some feeling of the sound, I'll just do it. So that, what that sound is really great for, if, if you can pick that up, it's quite a sharp sound. Um, it's great for shifting really uh, stuck energy in someone's aura. Um, when you're finding uh, someone is hanging on to a lot of stuff and they've been doing it a lot, a lot of their life and you're trying to help them to clear things, then uh, shaking that rattle with a good strong intention behind it. Otherwise, it's, it's just a stick and a bit of hide and a few stones in there. So when you start to bring your energy in, and particularly you um, imbue um, that rattle with your intention, then it becomes an incredibly powerful tool. Um, so, and again, depending on what shape rattle you want, uh, would quite often depict what your totem animal is possibly. Um, even if it's just a plain round one, you might want to paint a horse's face on there or a kangaroo, who knows, or an eagle's face. Um, and so that can be representative of your totem animal, which again is imbuing it with another energy, another life force. You can hang, um, here we get it, we're starting to get into the um, roadkill <laughs> um, experience. So you can be even hanging um, claws off there, claws of a, uh, uh, an eagle or a, a bird, a magpie or a crow. Um, and you could be painting a, a crow's uh, face on the front. That then brings crow medicine. And you might find that, that crow, you see a lot of crows. Well, then that's a really powerful thing to have with a rattle. So that's rattles. Now, I didn't make this one, but if you can see that, that's, it's made of wood and uh, horn. So the, this part here from there to there is um, mountain sheep horn from Canada. So the mountain sheep over there, um, you see them in the most incredible places in the Rockies, and they're very agile, um, and they have quite large horns. And so, um, unfortunately, they, there is a bit of roadkill that happens um, on the main east-west highway uh, going through Canada. Um, and uh, the sheep tend to, can sometimes wander onto the highway. Uh, but the First Nation people over there make full use of them. And uh, they create these rattles. Now, one of the interesting things with these rattles Rattles, rattles is that they sound like something in particular when it's rattled. So again, I apologize for the, the medium we're on and I hope the sound comes through at least reasonably clear. But when you hear this, close your eyes and when you hear this, what does it remind you of? So it's actually a rattlesnake because rattlesnakes are found all through that, uh, well, pretty much a lot of America, but right up through to the First Nation uh, uh, people in, in Canada. And uh, rattlesnake energy is very powerful. Um, any snake energy is, but rattlers have a particular sound that's quite unique to them because of what's on the end of their tail. There is literally a rattle on there. And when they're when they're agitated or, or when they're um, ready to fight, then they'll shake that tail and you can't miss it for anything else. So there's, there's rattles. Now, one of the things that um, I thought about, which 
I thought I can't really um, talk about rattles or drums or, or anything like that without talking about the process of making them. So, of course, each individual item has its own um, its own item or own things that you need to find to be able to create that. But the one thing that is needing to be done, particularly if it's a medicine tool, you need to bring prayer into it. When in the processes of bringing the pieces together or in the finishing of or in somewhere in the process of making it, you need to bring prayer and acknowledgement and gratitude of those pieces that you've found um, or been given to bring that medicine tool together. And there's a, a policy or a... Um, there's a way of doing this which is very appropriate, um, which I found uh, um, beautiful when when this was shown to me by uh, the Lakota people on Rosebud. Um, so when you do find something, or when you um, you find something on the earth, or you may find uh, feathers uh, from a bird that's been uh, hit, then there's a bit of a trade-off that needs to happen. There needs to be an acknowledgement of that animal or bird energy that you're using, um, or even plant energy. So what you would do, and most Native Americans have a little medicine bag that they have with them that has tobacco in it. Now, it's not for smoking, um, not in this particular, uh, for this reason, it's actually for trading. So one of the biggest trading items on a reservation or, or with, with the Native American people is tobacco because a lot of tobacco is used for ceremony, um, for using in a, a sacred pipe, uh, a chinumpa, that's called. Um, and uh, But also tobacco is used to trade when you find something. So you would always generally sprinkle a little bit of tobacco to the four directions in acknowledgement of what you've found um, or what you've been given by great spirit or given by the spirit of a, a bird or a, an animal. And this is very important stuff to remember because once you bring that gratitude in, your connection to the bird spirit, animal spirit, the plant medicine is far more powerful and far stronger. And uh, so to keep a little medicine bag on you all the time, because you just don't know when you're going to find something, um, is really good and really important. It doesn't have to be big. Um, how many things can you find in a day? Um, so it only needs to be small enough to have a little bit of tobacco in there to be used. So it can be quite subtle. Uh, but trading with the earth, with great spirit, and with those, those spirits um, of the bird and the animal and the plants, is really important to to acknowledge um, their powers, their strengths. Now, I thought an interesting one would be, I'll give you two variations of the same thing. So this is a little bit hard to get in the image, but if you can see that, there, you go, there we go. We've got a, a full picture. So that, guess what, is a part of an eagle's wing. So that's the tip of one of our beautiful eagles. Um, I found him up in the Flinders, and it's basically uh, kind of if if it's equal to um, from the wrist onwards. So this is the tip of the wing up here, and uh, uh, this is used uh, as a smudging fan. So when you're burning sage, um, you would use this to to sweep the sage, the smoke from the sage over the person that you're wanting to smudge. Um, a good question is, why would you smudge? What is smudging? So smudging is um, using that plant medicine of the sage to uh, cleanse the aura. And sage has a particular energy about it that is purposely used for that, just that fact. And using the wing of an eagle um, is quite commonly used, but you can use an owl, owl feathers. Um, I've made owl smudging fans, I've made crow smudging fans, um, I even made a, a, found a huge water bird on the side of the road once and uh, it, it, it was even hard to see how it had died but uh, it was definitely dead and um, 
um, I created um, a smudging fans out of that. It was incredibly beautiful. And um, so when you, again, when you create something like that, you would always give thanks. And I had an interesting experience with the first um, eagle I, I ever found um, back in my early days. So it was probably about, I don't know, three or four years into um, um, connecting with spirituality, which would have been roughly uh, 28 years ago. And, um, and what I did, um, I found this eagle on the side of the road to the, the um, horror of my two kids who were quite young at, at that time. Um, so I stopped on the side of a highway and um, I'm working with this eagle and um, I, you always ask, when you find uh, something like that, you should always ask great spirit or the spirit of that, the animal or the bird, what can I take of you? And generally you get some sort of recognition of what you can take. And so for me, I got a recognition of taking six feathers. So six eagle feathers. Um, and, um, and so I thought, okay, great. And um, I didn't have any tobacco. I didn't know about that back then, but um, I do now and, and I always use that. But I gave thanks in my way. And what I did, I, I took six feathers out and they just slipped out beautifully. It's like they weren't, they weren't even stuck in there. It's like they, there was no um, tension there at all. I took six feathers out and I, th I thought to myself, oh, look, I might just take another one. There's a really nice one over there. And you know what? That feather would not come out. And I tried pulling one feather out from all over the bird and it would not come out. There was an agreement that was made and it was my, um, it was my desire to take something else and it wasn't my right to take that because I, a, an agreement was already made. So it wasn't going to give over anything else and as it should be. So um, it, was, it was quite an interesting one that and I, whenever I found anything after that, I always stuck to... To the agreement that was um, um, made at that time, and um, and this is how you just get along with with nature and uh, and spiritual energy. Now, what I've got here, and I'll I'll bring it up in a second. I'll just tell you a, a short story. So I went over to up to uh, over to York Peninsula. That's right, and I was over there for about um, five days, five nights. And uh, one thing I forgot was my beautiful eagle smudging fan. So I thought, oh, I need something. So I was on the beach and uh, on the surf beach, and uh, I found um, a seagull feather and a pelican feather. And I made this, just two feathers. So that's it there. Now, I didn't have a lot of craft gear with me. So if you can see that stick that's going up there, um, there's a bit of uh, long grass that uh, was nice and flexible. I bound it with, and I actually had some masking tape that, that held it all together underneath. Um, and that's it. It's as rough as, um, well, it's not too rough, but it, it's, it's reasonably rough. But it was perfect for a smudging fan. And I... That would have been about four years ago, and I've still got it, and I still use it occasionally. Um, so you can make you can make things very quickly, and it probably took me a whole of about ten minutes because um, I had the masking tape in the car, found the grass on the beach, found the stick on the beach, and found the two feathers on the beach. So um, it's amazing what's there when you need it. There's an old saying that uh, God provides or Great Spirit provides. Um, well, that's one definite case when it did. Now, here's an interesting one. This this is, a lot of people may not know what this is. Um, so this is a stick. This came of, this was created, uh, again, quite quickly because there was a great need for it. Um, so going back probably about seven, eight years ago, um, I had a, we had a teepee set up in Woodside 
and I knew one of the teachers of the kindy. And she said to me, because she'd been in the teepee before, and she said, look, we've got a whole lot of kids that are in the process of uh, looking at the Native American culture just in a little way and of how to make or how, what teepees look like. Could we bring the kids over? And I thought, yeah, sure. And uh, I expected maybe, I don't know, about 10. What ended up happening, and I only got the phone call at the last moment before uh, they started coming over, was there were 40 of these little four-year-olds coming over with six teachers. And I'm going, oh, my God, um, how am I going to deal with this one? And because uh, having 40 four-year-olds, you can just imagine it could be quite easily chaos. So we got them in the teepee um, when they came over, but I thought, I need to create something. And, um, and I, I knew of um, a tool, a medicine tool, called a talking stick. Now, this is a talking stick. So it was actually a drum beater that I found, one and only drum beater that I found. Um, it was quite large. And these are all little eagle feathers. And I've got some beads and uh, nice shiny um, baubles hanging off there too. I would have made that in about 15 minutes. And when all the kids came into the teepee, they're all coming in and, of course, it's all noisy and they're all going, oh, ah, wow, you know, there's never been anything like a teepee before. And, um, and so I started talking about the teepee and, um, and some of the kids were putting their hands up, some were yelling out questions, and I said, okay, so I want to tell you about some special tools that I've got here too. And I showed them drums and I showed them this. And I said, now... If you were in a Native American village and you were in a big teepee and there are a whole lot of people in the teepee, because everyone sometimes is eager to talk, we have to be able to hear them talk. So the rule is, while you're in the teepee, if you're holding the talking stick, then only you are allowed to talk. And you know what? They actually did it. Apart from maybe one of the boys, they actually held up to that bargain. And, uh, and it was amazing. And they were so proud when they were holding the stick. It was quite incredible. Um, and I, when I was making it, I really felt spirit around me. And I, I gave thanks to the eagle feathers that I'd, I'd had and, uh, and to the, um, the quick thinking that came through. It wasn't just me. It was my guides as well. So, so that's a talking stick. Um, so we've also got... Uh, an abalone shell here. So this actually came from uh, Port Lincoln, from the abalone farms over there and um, abalone divers. And uh, so I, I buy and sell these two, and they're the ones I buy and sell are from Port Lincoln. Um, now, what these get used for is for burning sage. And you might think, well, a lot of the Lakota culture and the Sioux culture, who were basically right smack bang in the middle of the United States, they're all mostly all have an abalone shell. Why would they be using an abalone shell when they're right in the middle of the States? Well, what happened in the early days before white people were around, um, a lot of the tribes weren't fixed down in one place. They were nomadic. And one of the major things they were chasing was the buffalo. They would move to different parts of, of uh, their lands to uh, catch up with the buffalo when they were on their, their movements um, because this was one of their major uh, food um, sources. Now, what they would do, they would quite often um, catch up with other tribes who were also following the buffalo, and sometimes they were coastal tribes. And, of course, they'd have abalone shells with them, and um, they would trade uh, with the Sioux culture, and they may trade with some beadwork or some leatherwork or uh, um, oh, what else, turquoise. Um, and it's also where coral came from because the Sioux culture uses coral quite a lot in the decorations of their clothing. So... Um, so this trading brought uh, amazing things uh, to the tribes, and this is just an ex whoops. This is just an example of 
Lakota beadwork. So let's give a bit of a look. Oops, there we are. So it's got long uh, strands there. So this beadwork is quite detailed and takes a long time to do. And what they will do, they will have clothing that's fully beaded from top to bottom, particularly for their powwows where they're dancing. And uh, so with, with the medicine bags, um, what would you have in a medicine bag? This is the next question. Um, let me just, while I'm here, so what is the time? Wow, it's 10 to 8 already. We might go for a little bit longer than 8 o'clock. Um, let me just see if there's any questions. Uh, is there a substitute? So Doogie's asking, is there a substitute for tobacco that you can offer? Um, I guess why wouldn't you use, want to use tobacco? Um, you can buy tobacco reasonably cheap. Um, you can offer sage. Uh, you could offer, if, if you're desperate, I was always told by the guys on the reservation um, that you could use um, your hair. So just pull out a strand of hair um, as long as you're not bald. But um, something, you need to be offering something that is yours. So, um, so a strand of hair is, is uh, a good thing. And Tracy, let's have a look. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Kylie's saying we used a talking stick at the forum I went to on the weekend. It worked. It does work, but it even works with four-year-olds, which was amazing for me. Now, while I'm on um, just sharing some of the information that's come up on the feed, um, if you do have any questions, um, get them in quick because we haven't got too much longer. Um, but um, now let's look at some of the things you might have in a medicine bag. So quite often you you could have crystals. One of the common things for medicine men to have in a medicine bag is a natural quartz point. Uh, and generally it's quite large. And then also a natural amethyst point because quartz is used for um, waking up energy or um, energizing a part of a person, whereas amethyst is used for calming. So quite often uh, amethyst and quartz are used to bring the male, female, the polarity energies into balance within a person. And I've used that and it works really well. Um, and funnily enough, they were the one of the first two crystals I bought down at uh, um, Crystal Wave, down at uh, Grange, many, many years ago when I first started. So um, I've still got them, and they still work well. So what else you would have in there is possibly items that would relate to uh, your totem um, animal or bird energy that uh, you connect with. Um, uh, so I quite often have um, claws or teeth or something from from animals that I may have found or, or connect with. Um, I do. I wear also if I can find it uh, a bear claw. So I carry bear energy. So this is a black bear claw, um, and. Uh, you would also have herbs in there. So there are uh, quite a lot of herbs that um, you can use that um, for smudging. You, you'd have sage in there. You'd have tobacco in there for smoking a pipe. Um, you'd also um, possibly have something like uh, uh, bear root. So bear root is, is from North America. Um, oh, hang on. We've just got uh, Christine is asking why points. Well, points are more directive with the energy. Um, so a single terminated or a double terminated um, a clear or amethyst point, the direction of the energy goes where the point goes. And um, it's, it's much more powerful, I've found, when it's in its raw state. Um, 
it doesn't take away from the quality of the energy. It just takes away from the power of the energy. If you pick a, a crystal that's been say shaped by hand, whereas the natural point has all of the qualities and the formation of that crystal in its natural state. So I uh, hope that um, explains that one. And Fiona's asking, would the Native Americans always have used crystals? Well, probably not all, um, but certainly the medicine men and the medicine women would have. Um, they would have got them somehow. Um, and uh, crystalline energy is found all over the place. I mean, we have a lot of it in Mount Crawford Forest, but um, uh, many different types of um, natural um, crystalline energy is in the States. So there's a quite a wide variety over there. Um, so uh, you've got herbs. So um, this could be quite a long conversation, but we'll, we'll try and keep it to a minimum um about herbs um we could do an hour just on herbs but um things like uh, powdaka which is used it's it's from a, a bark of a tree in the states um it's used for um uh, spider bites and uh for irritations to the skin uh we've got um bear root which is a um Quite a heavy root. Actually, I've got some here somewhere. Somewhere. If I can find it. No, it's not there. Um, so it's quite a, an all-rounder bare root. What, what you can do is make teas out of it. It's great for boosting the immune system. It's great for stomach problems. Um, and you can get hold of bare root. Um, and uh, there's many ways you can use it. You can use it in a steamer. Um, and uh, you can um, make a tea out of it. Um, and you can even um, use it, uh, use the smoke of it to inhale. And it's a great way of getting into the body in different ways. Um, so detoxing is another thing that it's great for. And of course, the sage, there's tobacco, there's uh, um, a lot of Australian herbs too. There's, there's a great um, uh, smoke uh, for, for smoking ceremonies and smudging ceremonies. There's a great Australian one that we can get from Goolwa, which is down on the beach in the sand dunes, which is like a wild rosemary. And that's uh, fantastic for smudging. So um there's a, a few little varieties now i thought i'd leave till last well no actually it, well, i'll show you this one too this is thinking what on earth is that it's actually a jawbone of a buffalo a north american bison now quite often this this is part of a um Native Americans medicine. But this, don't let's just stick this to Native American. Many, many cultures uh, do this where they'll, where they'll decorate a body part and uh, they'll paint it and uh, put symbolism on, on that that is uh, directly denoted to the person. So just giving you a bit of a closer look. Hope that's clear. So it looks like we've got turtle medicine there in the middle. We've got uh, uh, lizard energy there. We've got um, crow energy. And then I think that the male down the bottom there is symbolic of uh, the person's life that that belonged to. Um, I was actually bequeathed this um, from a Native American. So um, I've taken it on not so much well it's kind of my medicine but it's it's not it's it's more of a a holding of his energy and a respect to him um so we'll put that one down now what i will finish off with would be the most sacred item spiritual item that a native american would have if they had one um 
So this here is a pipe, if you can see that. So that's stone. The red part is stone. There's an eagle's feather on top. And so a ceremonial pipe, as opposed to a, an everyday pipe, is quite different. Um, the pipe comes apart, and this is how it would normally be stored. Uh, the stone represents the female of the earth. The stem represents the male energy. And the pipe would be decorated um, um, personally by the person that owns the pipe. Um, so this is a, a pipe. So I was, I was given 30, uh, about 25 years ago, um, I was given this pipe stone. It was in a block. And uh, fortunately, I've got furniture making background. And so I carved um, an eagle's claw holding a bowl. And that's, this is a pipe I've used for some time. Um, so how a pipe is used, it's used to bring balance to situations where, um, where there's imbalance, wherever there's imbalance. Uh, people would come together. The pipe would be brought in. The pipe is an extension of uh, or a conduit to great spirit. And um, it's to bring Tonkashula or great spirit into the process of finding balance. Sometimes finding balance is between two people or two groups that are disagreeing about something. It can be about uh, bringing balance to the death of someone or to the birth of someone. Uh, quite often a pipe would be brought in when there's a marriage. Um, whenever there's ceremony, uh, the sacred pipe would be a part of that. And so, in a nutshell, um, I've, I've helped quite a few people that um, I've helped out at funerals. Um, I've done a separate ceremony after the funeral um, where the pipe's been brought in. Um, I've helped in situations where, uh, in relationships, people can't find balance. And there's an old saying um, that when in doubt, and this was said to me by an elder once, when in doubt, go back to the beginning. Um, and when you go back to the beginning of, say, in this case, where a relationship started, there's always joy and uh, wonderment and uh, lots of love. But then as things go sour, um, that love tends to be forgotten and that uh, that joy tends to be forgotten and then there's just anger and to, f to find balance at the end can be quite difficult so you need to help those people remember where it all started and this is where balance can occur when the anger drops and the hearts open again and um, and this is a special uh, way to to help situations and of course when the pipe is there the love, just pure love of spirit comes into the space. And I've seen many grown people cry when they hold the pipe because of that energy that the pipe holds. Um, so um, on that note, if anyone has any questions about the pipe, I'd be happy to, to share anything else. But we've kind of come, we did all right. We've got to eight o'clock. Um, let's see if there's anything else. But if anyone has any questions about the pipe or anything else that I've uh, brought in, quite happy to, um, to talk more about it just for a few minutes. Um, Petra's acknowledging the bison jaw. And yeah, it is beautiful. And it's big, very big. Um, so Trish is asking, are special paints used for painting on bone or leather? Uh, yes, well, it depends uh, in what way you mean leather um oh thanks kylie drums of course um on on deer hide or or hide uh the leather is differently treated to say soft leather the big thing not to use is oil paints on leather because what happens the oil 
that's that's in the paint tends to bleed out into the leather and you get this patch that looks like it's damp um, that's around the actual color so use acrylics a, a good quality acrylic paint is one of the best things to use um, and here's an example on hide so this is the first drum i ever made <clears throat> which is representative of bear claws. So in the yin yang way, bring it back a bit so you can see the whole thing. There you go. So that's, um, that's one of my drums. Um, as I make drums, I'm always trying to make new ones. So this is a much bigger one. It's a 13 sided drum. I'll try to get that back a little bit. It's quite large. Chose not to paint that because the skin is um, has beautiful uh, colorings in it. Um, it's a 13-sided drum. Um, here's a smaller round drum. Um, well, it's actually 10-sided. It looks round. Uh, that one's made of elk. Uh, the last one was red deer that I showed you. But this is a lot smaller, this one fits in a suitcase just nicely. And the same thing with the making of these drums, um, ceremony is done through the process because drums are very powerful things for either music or for healing. Um, and it is a little bit hard to describe fully what the drum's capable of, but generally the drum ends up becoming an extension of your energy and whatever intention you're looking for out of the drum as soon as you add intention into anything it becomes incredibly powerful so that's a smaller one and last but not least an octagonal one so let's bring that back there we go and look this won't do it justice because like i said sound isn't great over this medium but Has, these have beautiful resonance. So there we go. Um, so I've always got drums on hand. Um, so Christina's asking, you're meant to warm the drum before you use it? No, not necessarily. The only reason you would need to warm the drum is if it's cold, cold as in temperature cold or, or damp. So if it's raining outside and there's moisture in the air, then the skin tends to go a bit saggy. But if the, the drum's in a reasonably constant state of temperature, um, then it should be able to sound like that all the time. Um, and, uh, and so, um, yeah, there's, there should be no reason to warm it unless it's very cold, uh, which then the, the skin contract, uh, sorry, the skin expands and you don't have that tautness in the drum. Um, so uh, the, the skin of a, drum, of, of a deer is still porous, it's still open, and uh, it's still important to remember that uh, wh when you're owning a drum is to keep it protected don't leave it out in a hot car and don't uh, leave it don't let it get wet if at all possible um <laughs> why not fiona uh fiona's asking could we have a drum circle in the forest at some point yes i'd say yes let's do it um so we went out into the forest uh last weekend i believe and um, we connected with galactic beings, which was pretty good. So um, why not have a drum circle? I know some beautiful places we can do it. So it uh, looks like that's that's a date at some time. Um, <laughs> good one, Adair. She feels another trip coming back to SA. Hey, look, I'm full of it, <laughs> as many people would say. Um, thanks, Adair. The galactic beings forest walk was awesome. It was a good walk. Um, 
it was a bit more of an adventure than I expected, but uh, it was great. So there we go. It's six minutes past eight, and uh, that time goes very quickly. But thanks very much for, uh, for sharing, everyone, and for asking questions. It's what makes the evening, and uh, it just keeps the helps to keep the information coming. Um, so yes, Fiona, we'll put that out there soon um, to do a, a drum circle out in the forest. And we'll have a ball. So uh, hope you have a great week, weekend. And don't forget, there's a few things coming up. So you can look um, on the Facebook site for that. And um, there's still a few other little secrets that are coming up too very shortly uh, that I'll be putting out over the weekend. So enjoy, um, be safe. And um, don't forget, uh, Keep some tobacco with you. You may, you never know what's around the corner. You may find anything out there. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Bye.